I always travel with this recovery uh, bag. And, you know, you have to have a come along. And nothing beats this Mazda rope come along. It's just having that 50 feet of rope so that you can get lots of pull. Sometimes to, uh, to save a little weight, I bring a little metal one. It only gets you six feet of pull or 12 feet of pull, depending on how you rig it. Not enough, 50 feet. That's where it's at. You can also get this with a hundred feet of rope. So that's one thing. Tipped, tipped over. Not good. Next thing, I just love it. This, this guy is called the snow bungee. This is the full size snow bungee and you can run that either by human power uh, or by machine power. And what it does is you double that in length. So suddenly you have almost six feet of pull and a steady pull. It's like having three guys with you or two guys with you. And then you got to have lots of different uh, lengths of uh, of strapping to go around trees and stuff, not damage the tree and give yourself lots of uh, options to, to pull with. Okay, we're making a turnaround trail for the skidoos on the lake with our snowshoes so we can turn around. Gotta give it a little time to center so we might just do this and then take our snowshoes and look for bison on foot. Deep wet snow, it was time to turn around and instead of risking getting stuck and then having an ungodly amount of work, we just made a little trail for ourselves here with our snowshoes. Then we turn around. Once you tap down the snow and let it center for 20 minutes or so, it gets a very hard base. You can even walk on it without snowshoes. And these skidoos, especially this wide track, have less uh, track pressure than your foot. So about the same as a man on snowshoes, really. So, but it really is helpful to go on a trail because even with snowshoes, we were sinking right down. And when you sink right down with this, especially if you get off to the side, you get stuck. So, yeah, it's such a weird, weird winter time. Snow came early, lots of it, before it got really cold. And what it did is it depressed the ice and then the ice filled with overflow. So everywhere you go, you find overflow and you risk getting stuck and it's a pain in the butt. It's never been like this before because that snow pushed down the ice because the ice wasn't very thick yet. 
And then every time there's a little crack, the water forms and everywhere there, the ice is depressed, water gets underneath the snow. You can't really tell. And then suddenly you're in total muck. And this machine is one of my favorite things I've ever seen, but it's 750, 800 pounds probably with the stuff on it. It's way too heavy to lift. That's why I always bring that come along. Uh, we use the come along, we use the big bungee cord and we made a little turnaround because I don't feel like making a big turnaround here. You could. A better driver than me does that quite easily, but it's very easy to get kind of off kilter and get stuck. And I'd rather have done this than get stuck and then have to do something even worse. This was pretty easy. Just took a little time. It's nice being warm though. <laughs> Okay. Thanks for watching. Somehow I forgot to mention the probably the most basic survival or uh, getting unstuck tool. That's your shovel. The bigger the better. I, I always take a big green shovel and it allows you to move all sorts of snow and make those ramps. So how did I not mention this? I always bring that shovel. That shovel is like gold.